you're live. Hey everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Probably our last live of 2019 before a new year, a new decade. So many amazing things going to be happening. But I keep promising you a craft room tour. Um, but so many other things have happened that I wanted to just go live. I'm going to walk around the room. I'm going to show you my top organization tips. I've added links below for pretty much everything I'm going to show you. If there's something I've missed, just let me know and I'll add it in. Um, and if you want to know where anything's from, I can add those in. We always appreciate when you use our links. I know everyone always says that, but the reason is we get a really small commission off of every purchase you make, and that helps us continue to make videos, and it means that Greg doesn't tell me off. When I buy those new crafting supplies... It's no, really no, true. that's not true. I still tell you off. <laughs> <laughs> but it really helps. He doesn't tell me off as much. So we always appreciate when you use those links, and they're the reasons we always refer to them. And we also always add in tons of coupon codes. So it's well worth checking out either this video or another video, um, because you'll always find those coupon codes down there. And if you're a Hedgehog Hollow member, you can hit join, you can get even more codes. But anyway, moving on. Don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up, all those things. It really, really does help us. You have no idea how much it helps us. I'm gonna load up your uh, this video even on my laptop too, so I can see your comments. Am I supposed to pan over there? You are, yes, you're supposed to follow me. He's not very good at following, but <laughs> hey. uh, this way I can see all of your cards. I can see Debbie, Belinda, Glenda, um, Isis, and Kim have all joined us. Welcome, ladies. Happy Sunday. So uh, let's start with this wall. I know lots of you have seen this wall before. This is my Tonic Nouveau wall. And it's really, really easy because Greg did this background back here. You can see this like shiplap bit background here. And you put an end piece from that on it. And then what we did was we added three of those same pieces. So there's one here, one here, and one here on top. And then the same pieces, you can buy these all pre-stained at Lowe's. Trust me, we weren't staining them. What Alex is trying to tell you is that these pieces here that run vertical are exactly the same as these bits of wood that make up the horizontal shelves. Yes. And so they're really nice. It's really easy thin, to do. And you can buy these brackets at Lowe's and Home Depot. And then you can see I've got really nice thin shelves. So I have everything organized. So I have... I'll show you the way I did it. And, you and the other thing you haven't mentioned are these. You put some battens at the back. Oh, yeah. So you can see there's a second row that everything's higher. And this is just half of one of these. But again, you can buy them pre-cut hard. You don't have to cut them in half yourself. So it's really, really nice. But this is how I have these shells organized. So I have Nouveau drops, just like your regular crystal drops. Then I have crystal drops. Then I have jewel drops behind more, more crystal drops. Then we have dream drops and stone drops, vintage drops, and glitter accents, and then glow drops. So all of my drops are along this shelf organized. Let's hope Tonic don't reveal any more because <laughs> I'm gonna have issues. Um, and then up here we have sparkle sprays, shimmer powders, my one crystal grays, which actually should be down here. Um, I have all of my little uh, gems up here that I have sparkle dust. Everything you can see is in rainbow order too, even though now we're going backwards. Then I have fine detail embossing powders. Then I've got regular embossing powders. Again, you can see all pretty rainbow orders. Then I have glimmer paste up here. Again, rainbow order. And then over here, I have um, the glacier pastes. So they're up here. Then we move up. We have expanding mousse. All of my nouveau mousses. Again, rainbows. And then I have my masking fluid and my... Um, gilding flakes at the end here and then up on this one this one's a little bit different so I have my big glitters at the top and then I have my smaller glitters in front so if they come in a four pack and they come in those glass bottles they're here or if they come individually and they come in the larger plastic bottles they're up here as well and again they're in some kind of rainbow order so they coordinate with the bigger ones behind and if I have a glitter duster for one or a glitter mister the, the nouveau versions then they're in front or next to the appropriate glitter and I put a label on them and then up here this tends to be Greg has to help me or a step stool but I have all of my sequins confettis you know all of that kind of fun stuff at the top my grande nouveau drops are over there I don't use them very often because I have the smaller ones and then on this side I have glitter misters up there so you can see I've got some room for expansion if I need it um, but that's kind of how I organize all of those kinds of things but I love this wall it's so pretty and I like the fact it's on display. For me, if I put it away, I'm never going to use it. Whereas if I have it on display like this, I'm always going to use it. One thing I shouldn't mention is until, uh, what's the month we're in? December 31st, 
we have a 15% off tonic tours uh, coupon. So things like those Nouveau Glitter Misters are gonna be in there, your Tim Holtz tours are in there. You can check that link out below. And if you're a Hedgehog Carnival member, you get 10% off the tonic store all the time. So that's well, well worth it. Okay, then we're gonna move down to this part. So here we have 12 by 12 storage, and I'll show you how I have mine organized. So this is just miscellaneous 12 by 12 colored cardstock from various companies. I put it in the, um, the 12 by 12 holders and then I label what it is because that keeps it nice and clean and it keeps it together and it means I can put a few in here. So this section might all be tonic, this section might all be Elizabeth Craft and so on and so on. And then you can see a little bit of overflow, but this is my Cricut area. So in here I have all my Cricut supplies because they come 12 by 12. So you've got poster boards, there's leather, there's foil card stock, you know, all those kinds of beautiful things that Cricut do. That's all in here. We move along, I've got more 12 by 12. This is American Crafts, this one. This one's Elizabeth Crafts. And you can see they're all labeled. So they all have a label on the top here telling me. So as soon as I pull it out, I can see exactly what I've got, which I absolutely love. Isn't that cool? So that's all there. And then in this one, this is where they start to get different. So these are all of my different mediums. So everything from, and Greg can zoom in, so you can see on the edge of these, it tells you like, Copic, stamping paper, newsprint, clearly for art, Stonehenge, Tyvek, Rhinia, um, Strathmore Black, Strathmore White, watercolour. And then down here, it's the same. There's photo paper, um, thermal web supplies, glassine, mixed media, shrink, adhesive, vellum, palette, acrylic, and masking. So again, they have all of these stickers on here. So I know exactly what goes in here. And these are all from Stamp and Storage. Greg built these in. So there's Ikea Alex's on the bottom. And then he screwed these together because these shelves all come out apart from the middle one. So he took them all out, screwed them together in a line and then screwed them down into the Alex. <clears throat> that's right, isn't it, Greg? Yeah, that's right. Um, so that's how all of these are put in. You'll see there's more around the room. I've added a link to stamp and storage in the description below for you. I these think are, I... one breakthrough that we had is the stamp and storage, these ones... The height of that plus that particular Alex is exactly the same as the height of these narrower Alexes with the... Are they the narrower stamp and store things? Yeah, so these are 8.5 by 11 slash A4 size, and these are the 12 by 12s. So if you put the 8.5 by 11 on top of narrow Alexes and the 12 by 12 on top of the wide Alexes, they both come to exactly the same height, which means you can put a desk across them. Yeah, so... Um, that was Greg's realisation. And then there's a little cubby in here which kind of just gets thrown off stuff. This is a 12 Days of Christmas giveaway in here and there's a Brutus Monroe one and some other bits. But this one's just a little cubby to store sorts of bits in. Mainly it has mats and those kinds of things. And then these Alex's down here, and I'm going to pick this one because this says Simon Hurley. Because Simon Hurley's watching, so um, this is my Simon Hurley drawer. So you open this up, it has my Simon Hurley inks and my Ink on 3 inks in it. And this is how they all go on. So my favourite things, um, scrapbook.com. You can see they're all lined up in here. And then in the bottom down here, I have all of my ink cubes. So I buy these from Organise More, and I don't think I added a link, but I'll do that afterwards. Um, you can see all of my cubes. So I've got Gina K, Alter New, uh, Lawn Fawns under there. So all of my ink cubes go in these trays and they slide in. You can actually fit six in a um, drawer quite snugly, but it works for me. And then, um, for instance, with my Distress, I did it slightly differently. So all, these are all of my Distress inks. And then the underneath row is the Oxide in the same colour. And they're in the rainbow order that Ranger give them to you in. And then if I pick one out, there's a sticker underneath that says Dried Marigold. So I know that that's where that one goes back. And so everything always goes back in the right place. And then we put some wood. I don't know if you can really see it, but there's some wood at the back so that they don't move around. Because you can actually get another row in if you want to. But this is how I wanted mine organized so you gotta go down and show them all because it uh, looks really lovely so we have more and more and more how expensive are these uh these alexes i think they're like 90 dollars maybe 80, 90 dollars because they're really well made for what they are maybe a bit less you can see my hero arts drawer is a little bit overflowing but i've kind of run out of room so it's just stayed like that and the same with my lawn fawn drawer but that's how um, they kind of work. So I could really do with some more drawers. <coughs> Greg. Uh, somebody asked for So I'm just going to take <coughs> on questions. Uh, Simon says it's beautifully organised. Thank you, Simon. Um, it's also beautifully built. Yes, thank you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, does your paper get dusty storing it like this? No, it doesn't. Um, we just run a Swiffer around the room, or I should say the girl who cleans for us does. And I don't have any dust on my papers. Um, so the pull-out drawers underneath, the paper storage up for my kit. Yeah, they're IKEA Alex's. So both this set here and the set I'm going to show you along the back, which are a different um, width, they're both IKEA Alex's. And they also come in tall, and there's a desk version. There's tons of stuff like that. So. Um, and then what we did was we put wood on top with this lip and we tiled on top here. So you've got this really pretty tile pattern. This um, was also really easy to do. I know it looks hard, but it really wasn't. We just built all, all the Alex's are just flat backs. All the paper stories just comes as it is. And all we did was assemble it all and then just screw it all together. So all of, so this whole bank here is all fixed together. All of those all the way across there that we'll show you in a minute are all fixed together. And then on the top, we just got some plywood um, cut it to size and just screwed it straight down all the way across the top and then you just tile straight onto the plywood and tiling flat like this is really really, really simple easy. to do we use black grout black well. grout's key because that looks that lovely looks really nice. that's a nice cup of coffee yeah that's my coffee <laughs> um so that's that and i think i've seen these tiles used a few times i think vicky Bootin has them in her craft room as well so that's that and then along the back wall we have the same shelves now when we used to film in here you saw these these shelves weren't here um, but we've added these in since. I have all of my Distress Oxide sprays. I'm actually missing six. Can you believe it? Or seven. I need to go and fix that. And then my plan is to put behind each Oxide the actual regular spray stain. So they'll be together. Um, and I still need to work out a labelling system. But that is the eventual plan. I have my Alter New refills. My Mica Mists. My Alter New watercolour refills. You can see everything's on here. And it's all arranged in rainbow order. And it's by brand. So... There's a couple of testers things here. All of my golden supplies are all the way along this shelf. They look so pretty. We've got my glitz gels, my metallics, my uh, Diane Reevely paints are up there, my Dina Wakely paints, you know, all of those kinds of things, all in rainbow order. And then these um, work surfaces are great because I have all of my machines are normally out, like my cutting machine, my scan and cut, my Cricut, those kinds of things. Currently my sewing machine is out because I just had it fixed and converted to the US. And my new cover stitch machine, I've been doing some sewing and we've got a fun tutorial. Ali and I made something that we wanted to share with you. And where'd you plug them all in? And, oh yeah, so at the back here, move this one to the side slightly, we installed these. So we have outlets all the way along, over on every side, so I can plug in as many things as I need to and everything's just fixed in perfect. Thank you, and this Ray. was also really easy because we just screwed these, they're metal, they're um, really chunky metal ones designed for like building sites and things. So they're really sturdy. Um, we just, there's screws back here that we just screwed them straight into the wall. And then we just did the wood paneling up against them. Yeah. So it's very, very easy to do. And of course you can switch the whole unit on or off. Okay, which is so lovely. Somebody asked me about mica mist being stored horizontally. So yes, you should store them horizontally. You'll actually see in one of my drawers, I have a set stored horizontally for actual use, but I just have a set up here because I like to see the colors. Now I know in practical, that's not really uh, something you can do, but ideally you do want to store your mica mist uh, laying down. So like this rather than like this, but they just look pretty up there. So I have a set just to complete the set, particularly as I do a lot of videos for tonic and things. I keep those up there. And then as Greg mentioned, so this is now the, the narrower storage. You can fit eight and a half by 11 or A4 in these because there is A4 in them. Um, so this is all of my tonic craft perfect papers and I have them stored by handmade cotton papers. Then I have like my mirror and satin cardstocks. Then we have pearlescent cardstocks, glitter cardstocks, and then like the craft, um, craft board, foil, metallics, all those kinds of things. So that's how this paper goes all the way along. And then I have a little paper chart that I just flick through if I need to find something. Um, I really love this system. People have asked me that, does it affect my paper? Does it bend it? I haven't had any problems storing my paper that way at all. So um, I really, really like that. And then the other thing about having the shelves is it means I can put some of my favorite things out. So Stampin' Storage just sent me this little paper cube ornament that's up here. Um, somebody else found this little ornament for me, so that went up there. Um, one of the design team girls at Tonic is super talented and I loved her stuff. So it's my favourite one. Greg got that, but it went up in here. My Mother's Day <laughs> gift is over there. So if you send things into the hollow, you'll find that they appear on these shelves. And then in my narrower drawers down here, 
again they're all labeled there's a little bit of labeling update needed but for instance this is my glitter drawer that shouldn't be in here um but you can see like all my glitters get stored in here and all my bits for my glitter the next one down is interactive and light up so everything goes in there uh twine and gems again you know everything gets stored together and it's super easy to find that's laura's drawer for when she visits um flowers and embellishments down here templates uh colored pencils so all my colored pencils all of my um you know like paper stubs go in here those kinds of things so anything you need to go with that medium um ideology is empty because i moved that around we've got miscellaneous tools uh, stamp platform drawer, an easy clean mat drawer, Maddie's drawer we're not even going to go into, um, you know, metal work stuff goes in here, Tilly's drawers down there, wire tools, washi tape, flowers, acrylic paint, so whatever you want to find in here is really, really easy to find because it's all labelled. So that makes it great because if I'm working in here, Ali's working here, maybe Sean wants to take an Instagram post, he knows where he's going to come and get stuff. The labelling was absolutely crucial yeah. because that's how you know that stuff's gone back in the right place and it also is how anybody else can help you out. It's like when you have friends over or something and you clear up, if it's labelled, people can help. If it's not labelled, you're totally on your own. Yeah, yeah. so this is so much easier. It means we can all find what we're looking for and things like... You know, What's the size of the room? This is a really small this room. This is not that big. It's like 40, less than 14 foot square. So this is not very big. We worked really hard to maximise every inch of space in here so it's not this is like the office in our house um you know like the official office um and then i turned it into this craft room so you can fit a lot into a room um things like you know my tonic uh guillotine i always have out my uh, travel mat is great on here i have my gemini out so things i use all the time stay out and then i have lots of carts too so this is my coloring medium cart this is a brass club, or maybe it's even the um, Target version. But I have my Copic organization in the top here, and I've shown you this before. And then down here. It fits here, absolutely perfectly into well, the top yeah, just by chance. For the, no, oh, is it? For this. Okay. And then down here, I have all my calligraphy supplies in both sides, all my inks, and um, all those things. And then down the bottom, I have my aqua painters, my blossoms ended up in here, um, my zig pans, you know, all those kinds of things, they all fit in here perfectly. These carts are fantastic, actually, because, because you, like yeah. Particularly as we have this hard floor, it just makes it super simple. This is my sewing cart, so this is one I put together. Um, these are from Target that fit in the top, and they fit, you can fit one in every level. Um, but this is all my sewing stuff. So when I want to sew, I just get this one out. Last night I showed you my knitting cart next to where I sit. This is all my Vanina supplies. This is all my baby lock serger, pins and needles, tools, more tools. And then like anything I don't use so often goes down the bottom. So if I'm sewing, I just grab this cart and I have everything I need. Where did you get the Copic pen organizer on the top, the this wooden thing? This is from Etsy. Um, they used to be called TJ and things. I think they're now called like the Grey Barn or something like that. But if you put into Etsy Rascog Copic holder, you'll find it. And they do one that fits in like the Copic suitcase. They do them to fit in all sorts of different things. So you can check those out. Um, and then over here, we have another little cubby that Greg made. And this cubby is great because it fits two carts in. So this is another coloring cart. This, again, is one of the same people's organizers. Um, but for non-copic. So this has like my nouveau markers in it, um, some other zigs, my spectrum noirs go in here, you know, all those things go in here. Underneath I have some extras, so any spare items, and then I have a vinyl scraps area in the bottom that Ali created. And then the one at the back is all paint pouring. So all of my um, pre-done paint pour things, Greg can show you in the back there, you've got colour pour. He also put a light in this one, which is really nice. And then there's some other like art binny storage stuff down there. So this works really, really well. Um, this is actually, this is an important point. When you're doing stuff like this, make sure to put a light into the corners because as soon as you put a light down there, suddenly that entire corner space becomes useful because you can see everything. Yeah, and then this is just the perfect size to put the top in, almost like he planned it. I did plan it. <laughs> <laughs> We measured out exactly, like this one, the edge there was defined by this like bank. And then we worked out where this one was going to go to make sure that the gap in that corner is enough to get these through. You just couldn't do it on both no, sides. No, we couldn't so do it on both sides. Or, or if we weren't going to do it on both sides, we'd lose a whole column of drawers. So that one just says dark and is kind of for papers and things. Yeah. 
And this one is wide enough to put those units in. And then we have another bank of the wider drawers. These are kind of more like day-to-day -day things in there. So some of these actually have gaps in. So this is wax seals and book binding. This is all my mixed media supplies, things that don't have a home. Um, this is my embellishment. So if you have these embellishment holders, um, and I'll add a link afterwards if you haven't seen these before, but you can fit three to four in your drawer. And, you know, everything goes in here, all your embellishments. Um, this one is just some Bible journaling and things. And then metalwork tools, different metalwork to the other one. Pens and calligraphy. And then I use these art bin holders, which are great for this. Um, watercolor pencils. Um, other mixed mediums, you know, all of those kinds of things go in here so, so nicely. And then all my solid card stocks are across here. So 12 by 12 and eight and a half by 11 go together. Um, this is all tonic and this is all lawn fawn down to the metal. So um, that's all of those things. And then over here, this is like super, super functional. So I don't craft a lot in this corner. I'm gonna move Maddie's sewing machine out of the way for a second. I have those wooden drawers I showed you once before. I love these because um, normally all of this isn't squished up because we've been sewing. But you open these up and you can store all your pens, pencils, everything in. And again, I put labels down at the bottom here. I saw someone said they need to borrow, Greg. <laughs> you're welcome anytime. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> again, then, everything is labeled, yeah. which is really crucial. And then all of my other things are in one of these IKEA. You'll see there's lots cleaning. of these around. So these are all cleaning supplies, alcohol, things you might use in your crafting. Ooh. And then this is from Stampin' Stories too. So this is actually designed to hold Project Live, but I love this adaptation. So what I've done is all of my cardstock always gets cut down to car front size. I mean, I keep some excess, you saw that on the other side. But then what I did was I cut down plastic folders, labeled, of course, and then all of my cardstocks go in here. So I know that this is black glossy cardstock, this is comic manga, here's adhesive canvas from Ranger, and distressed speciality paper, there's some wooden paper, I have no idea what's in the back here because it doesn't have a label, um, Koei Noor, uh, Windsor and Newton. So you can tell whatever paper you're looking for, you just kind of scroll through here, and there's dividers that tell you what everything is. Oh, hi, D. Hi, D. <laughs> and then um, on the back here, we have alcohol inks, rainbow order, of course. And then my pearls go at the back um, on that one. Hopefully there's going to be some more colours. We've got Altenew ink sprays, Dilutions, Lindy's, all my liquid watercolours, my TCW supplies, my Finnabar supplies. And then I collect those uh, destination stamps. So I put those at the top because they're harder to get to. And right now I have a little bit of spare space so they can go up there. And then over here, I keep the cat's things. And I know none of you have met the cat yet. She is new uh, and she's a little bit scared of things, but she is around somewhere. Um, but again, more of those drawers in here. I know they do not damage the tips of my pencil. Somebody asked me that before, but you can see, you know, how everything is labeled. Um, all of these are my Prisma colors and they're done in rainbow order as well. So, um, up here, you've got my alcohol blending solution and just like bits and pieces you might use day to day in your crafting. And then you move on to these two white cabinets. So I'm going to pull the cat's crate out so that you can. Oh, I might need Greg's back there. I think I've caught on my um, cat and it's going to fall down. Here we go. Don't help, Greg. Okay. I'm holding the camera. Help! I can't. I'm holding the camera. Here, we'll swap for a second. Oh. It's stuck on the. Um, What's it stuck on? The furnace thing at the back. There we go. Thank you, Greg. Okay. So I'm going to give Greg back the camera. Or my phone, I should say. Okay, so this is my favourite part of the room. And it took me a long time, Greg will tell you, to find something that worked to organise everything I want. These are IKEA kitchen cabinets. They're pantry units from IKEA. You can get different fronts, different configurations. And you can configure the drawers however you want. You can have narrow ones, you can have wide ones, you can have cupboards, you can have whatever variation you want. And, and I do have doors to go on the top here, but I actually decided, Greg was right for once, that I should leave it open. I'm getting the smug look. Um, but you, there are, I do have the doors if I wanted to put them on, but I actually really like having them open because I see stuff. So this is how I have organized these. This is my adhesives drawer, and it does need some work. We are. Tidying and organising this week because we've got lots of creativation projects to make. So that's the adhesives drawer. Then this is my embossing powder drawer. So 
the way I've done this is these are the cutlery organizers from Organize More that I linked up below um, with my embossing powders in. These are my large ones from Tonic. And then anything you might need, so like your red funnels go in here, should be in that corner. And then all my inks go in this little pot here. So this is a little Ikea pot, but it has my pens, my little um, brush things that I use, and any kind of embossing ink all goes in here. And then we go down. This is my stamp. So I have four drawers like this. I'm just gonna show you one. Um, and it's all organized by company. Again, I need to have a bit of a thin out, but so all my Alton you goes here, then Art Impressions, then it's I think Avery L and so on and so on. So everything goes here in stamps and dies. The only one I've got to fully organize, I'll show you in a second, is Lawn Fawn. And then these happen to fit in the side perfectly and they can hold all your excess things. So like my extra dividers. And what I want to do is put on the bottom some non-slip rug underlay because it stops everything moving around. I just have to- Where did you get the um, specialist cardboard dividers to separate these out? Oh, they're my Amazon boxes. Oh, they're Amazon boxes, they're right, okay. Amazon boxes. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> That was Greg's invention too. So the only one I've fully organised so far is Lawn Fawn. And if you come down here, you can see, and you saw me do this on a live a while back, but so I have like scenery, suburbia, borders, um, boxes and 3D, reveal wheels. So within each company, I do want to organise, but I'm just not at that point yet. Um, but that is the plan. And then you have another two drawers over here that need some work, but you'll see. So I love this drawer because this is all on my WOW embossing powders. Look at that. I think, wow. <laughs> and then I have a tray on top that has my Eco Sparkles, my Fab Foil, and like any extra stuff from Wow in here. And my Wow embossing gun. So we have one in this room. And it is plugged in. There's an extension lead and it's plugged in. So if you open the drawer, you can start embossing. And then this drawer really needs to work because I have accumulated a lot. But this is my ThermoWeb foiling drawer or my general foiling drawer. So you can see my foils are in here, like my foil core foils I'm going to pull out. All my ThermoWeb foils are here. So it's still a work in progress. And I think craft rooms always are. But I love that, you know, this is how this works. And then under here, you have two more drawers of stamps. So I have these and then I have the one underneath two stamps and dies. Um, and I have an organization cart for labeling and things. That's not even in this room. And I'm actually redoing it at the minute because it's a little bit rickety. But that's how that works. And then in the top of these, this is great because I have tons and tons of space. So this is my We Are Memory Keepers punch uh, storage dividers. Again, I've linked that up in the description for you. This is the um, stamp and storage embossing folder divider. So all my embossing folders can go in here and I know exactly where they are, they're easy to find. At the back there, there's some like, excess card stock. If I've done a class, I put it in the binder back there. So I think that I don't need very often, there's a spare light in case the guys film up here. And then there's that awful glue sponge, um, which you all know how I feel about that. This is a really fun idea. So this is something else I have up here. This is an art bin and it's background paper. So if I make a piece of paper that I really, really like, um, maybe it's foiled in a video or, you know, whatever I created, I put it in here. And then when I'm card making, if I want a pattern paper, I need something. I know exactly where to come and find it. This one is my background stamp. So all my background stamps go in this one here. And there's my heat proof gloves because behind here is my heat press, my pink one. And the one thing you don't want to do with a heat press is keep it all the way down on the tension of the spring. But as long as you release that tension, you can store it like this. And in the front is my little caboodle with some extra bits and bobs in. And then down here I have a fridge bin with my acrylic blocks, my Jane Davenport, all my stencils are here. There's two boxes of stencils um we've got this that laura kelly just sent me her lovely little mug and then that things like my memory misty my ex my extra um gemini plates are in here my reynolds wraps you know all those kinds of things that you just need to hand my splat box all of that just fits in there really nicely on this side we have six by six paper pads so these are new paper pads to be used once i've used them in a video they go in that art bin back there which perfectly fits six by six paper pads which is this is my system so this is new and hasn't been used um so i pick from here first and then i use the things behind my extra labeler my big gemini my paper scraps box is here and then these up here i did do a separate video on these are all my ideology so if i want ideology there's two of these i just grab these down these are tonic and so you get 10 percent off as a hedgehog collar member or maybe it'll be storage month soon we don't know um you can just put everything in there too and there's smaller versions 
Here I have all my Tim Holtz stamps. These two are actually empty, waiting to take all of these. So these are the organizers. Uh, mailing supplies are over here. And then here is all of my cut colored cardstock. So you can see these are my two boxes of needs put away because I've just got it cut. But when it's done, you have like American Crafts, Lawn Fawn and Ellen Hudson. And then they come out and of course, I'll show you one that's in rainbow order in a second. But they all fit back here and they're all labeled by this Hero Arts. There's Gina K and Altenew. This is Lawn Fawn, so this is gonna be in rainbow order. So everything goes in there and then these are my card bases. So these are my pre-made tonic card bases and envelopes. And again, they fit in a fridge bin that just fits down the side here. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Greg's toolbox is not staying because if I have his toolbox in here, it means I can't have a table in here. So that's... It's too big and heavy to move anywhere. I'm working on that. And it works perfectly because anytime I need to grab some tools to build something, you know, everything's nicely in here. See? No. Tools, fixtures, fittings. This is the other half, half of crafting. There's all like yeah. uh, spanners, screwdrivers. Yeah. People are interested in this, honey. This is like a cornerstone of any yeah. decent craft shop. Hammers, leveraging stuff. She had to reorganize her craft room after getting all the Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. Um, Kim would like to borrow me to come and organize her craft room. Um, <laughs> so I need to come up with one paper that works for anything. Yes, that would be yeah. really nice. Uh, creativation coming. You might need to add a new addition to the room. I know. I've seen some of the creativation things. There's amazing things coming. Um, she's, uh, Belinda has resolved herself to the fact her craft room will never be organized because she's always changing things. So I was the same, I was always changing this, it had metal shelves in it, and eventually I just found a configuration that worked, and this looks a mess by Friday afternoon, and on Saturday I come and spend half an hour in here, I organize it, so there is hope, and I can tell you, you can make it look. I think the biggest keys is firstly, you need more storage than you have stuff. You can't just design your storage to accommodate the stuff you have, you've got to design it to accommodate the stuff you're going to get. So I think that's really crucial. And the other thing that's really crucial is labeling. You've got to label everything so that everything has a space and you know where it's going to go. Yeah. I think those two things are probably the biggest key. So that's my craft room. As there will be a table added back in with my drawers. Oh, thank you, Karen. As well. um, oh, he's sometimes nice. Um, <laughs> Delaney Jane Cross says, are we doing exclusive creativation videos again this year? Yes, we are. And um, if you haven't already seen, we are the official media partner again, so we'll be on the show floor first. All of those things, you'll get to see everything before everyone else. Plus, super exciting, exclusive news, we haven't told anyone yet, but you can find out right now, is that we have a Creativation booth. There will be a Hedgehog Hollow booth at Creativation. Um, there's no products or anything in it, but we're going to have giveaways, there's a photo booth, there's all sorts of amazing, amazing things in there. You're going to want to come and stop by if you're at Creativation. If not, you know that there'll be all sorts of things going on. We're also working on how we can do more live streams for you so you can see things, excuse me, as they're going on from the floor. Uh, but tons and tons of things. If you have any questions about the craft room, you can drop them in the comments below. I'll add that organized more link, excuse me, for you. And then if you need anything else, just let me know. Don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up. And we will see you again very, very soon for some more videos. So happy crafting, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye.